Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition's top stories. Commuters on public transportation on the 2H Castries to Viewforth route are being urged to get tested amid a possible COVID-19 community spread. The SSDF shows our boys matter and is sharing a culture of light and renewal. St. Lucians have been placed on a public health alert following the recording of the 29th case of COVID-19 on island. A 48-year-old male minibus operator tested positive after seeking care at a respiratory clinic. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Vilmar george says this case poses high risk to St. Lucia given the possibility for community spread. Health authorities are yet to determine the source of infection and are urging commuters on public transportation on the 2H Castries to Viewfort route to visit the respiratory clinics for testing. Come in, get assessed, get tested. We're trying as much as possible to widen the net of the possibilities of persons coming through between um, Viewfort and Castries. So we made available those extended clinics from Viewfort, Denry, Leclerc as well. Wellness Center to ensure that we can we can manage. We've also set up um, testing and assessments within the community as well to make it easier access for persons who may have been concerned or possible contacts of, of those cases. Dr. Belmar George says despite the high risk of community spread from this latest case, at this time there is not sufficient evidence to restrict the movement of nationals by way of curfew or lockdown. Adherence to the protocols, the CMO reminds, will help keep individuals safe. The information that we have in terms of our results, we, we're not finished um, all of the results. We have not finished our assessment of the situation. I don't think we have enough information to make such a recommendation. How would we know when? Um, we anticipate after a few days of testing, then we'll be able to give a better idea of the impact. So are we but looking at numbers in terms of testing? If we say we've tested a thousand people, is the, you looking what sample size are we looking um, at? We're looking at about 500 to see what, what percentage, what positivity rate we get from, from at least 500. So maybe in the next few days, we'll get a better idea of what the level of spread um, may be. But notwithstanding, um, our protocols are robust enough that if they are followed and if we get adherence to them, even with community spread, the need for a full shutdown would not be um, necessary. And I'm saying that although when I say community spread, it all depends. Is it sporadic cases? Is it a huge community? It all depends on how the level of spread is. Such a decision would be made. Um, such a recommendation would be, would be made. And once again, anyone who traveled from the 2H Castries to Viewfort route via minibus M481 during the period Monday, September 28th, 2020 to Friday, October 9th, 2020, please visit the respiratory clinics for assessment. The five existing respiratory clinics are at the Grosely Polyclinic, the Leclerc Wellness Center, Denry Hospital, Viewfort Wellness Center, and the Sufra Hospital. Individuals who are unable to visit the clinics can call the 311 hotline for assistance. Minibus operators island-wide are getting tested for the coronavirus. Health officials made arrangements for their testing to begin Sunday, 11th October 2020, a day after the COVID-19 diagnosis of their counterpart. President of the National Council of Public Transportation, NCOPT, Godfrey Ferdinand, encourages operators to not panic and avail themselves as health officials conduct investigations and contact tracing activities. I must say um, we had a very good response from okay. the operators and the testing will continue um, today and, and into tomorrow because, um, again, manpower is a factor. Um, also, we have this stigma that, that and, and all the pro propaganda going across whether it is true or false. So you would have individuals being a bit reluctant. There are also people, persons that are fearful naturally of, of any kind of test. Mm -hmm. So we are still working and encouraging individuals to go and get this particular um, test done. 
Commissioner of Police Sever Moshari has announced a zero-tolerance policy regarding mandatory mask laws on public transports, while leniency offered to the sector on seating capacity has been revoked. A maximum of 10 individuals may occupy a public transport. The NCOPT president hopes that this will persuade minibus operators to run a tight ship. Presently going back to 10 or, or, or having us... Um, Transport in 10 is a concern because profitability is just at zero. We, we are just offering a service doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so the concern is that um, operators are, are really, really downspirited on mm -hmm. the fact that they have to resort back to 10 and that um, there is a possibility that there might be islands, um, community spread, spread mm -hmm. which creates even a greater concern to the operators who has it who doesn't have it mm -hmm. um, but what, what this particular case has done is allow persons to know and see the importance of following the protocol president of the national council of public transportation ncopt godfrey ferdinand the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, SSDF, expands its targeted mentorship program, Our Boys Matter, to District Education 6, View Fort. The launch was marked by a brief signing ceremony on Thursday, 8th October 2020, at the View Fort Comprehensive Secondary School, Campus B. The success of the Our Boys Matter program is directly tied to the success of the beneficiaries. That word from Dr. Allison Mathre, Executive Director of the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, SSDF, as he urged its new recipients to make the best of this support now made available in the south of the island. Our Boys Matter, a holistic mentorship program spearheaded by the SSDF, was officially launched in January 2019. In its pilot phase, the initiative offered 100 at-risk students educational assistance, meals, transport allowance, housing and psychosocial support in the northern and western education districts. Now, in October 2020, the program extends to District Education 6, View Fort. Parents of three students at the Comprehensive Secondary School Campus B signed the agreements during a brief ceremony on Thursday the 8th. I want the parents to understand that they're very privileged because there are a number of students and a number of schools. Even some of the traditions, some of the schools that started the program, if they always want to add more boys, they have, of course, and I understand that everybody has boys that, that really fit the criteria. But, but we, we decided to come down here and invest our time and resources in you. And I certainly hope that you all will pave the way for the boys that will come after you to influence the SSDF to come, work, to come on and take more boys from here. Acting principal of the Viewfort Comprehensive Secondary School, Ava Peter, welcomed the initiative in assisting the disadvantaged within its school population. Um, on behalf of everyone at Viewfort Comprehensive, I think this is a, a very touching day for all of us. And we definitely appreciate um, the SSDF as well as the Our Boys Matter initiative for considering Viewfort Comprehensive and for including us um, in, in this program. Acknowledging the disproportionate underperformance of boys in the classroom, Education Officer for District 6 Stephen Ogeest lauded the program for addressing root causes beyond the education system. To deal with issues of male underperformance, it is necessary to identify the specific issues that are holding back the performance of our males and to address those issues. It is against this background that we in District 6 applaud the work of SSDF with the program Our Boys Matter. The Our Boys Matter program is a collaborative effort between the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, Massey Store St. Lucia Limited, and the St. Lucia Electricity Services Limited, Lucilec. Still with the SSDF, the agency is assisting St. Lucians in diaspora make a difference here at home. Anissia Antoine has the details. The St. Lucia Social Development Fund has been working closely with the Diaspora Office to help facilitate the donations received from the St. Lucia diaspora. The latest undertaking of the organizations is the establishment of a thrift shop in St. Lucia with the aim of assisting nationals here at home. 
The executive director of the SSDF, Alison Mathre, noted that the St. Lucian associations from Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United States have shown absolute commitment towards the initiative. I think the challenge was they wanted to find something that they could unify, come together on, to make a meaningful dent in poverty in St. Lucia. And we were able to present that pre, um, to them through a proposal that we set up a thrift shop in St. Lucia that would be funded by the USLOA, if you will, through contributions. And um, at the end of every year, we would have discussions with a steering committee that has been that comprised members of the SSDF and the USLOE to determine what the funds would go to, the proceeds from that. That was, to me, one of the most amazing um, experiences at the SSDF. And I think it's a watershed because there is no question that there are a number of St. Lucians living overseas that are very committed to helping St. Lucians in St. Lucia. Mathra expressed gratitude to Watch Radio and Family and the St. Lucian Association of St. Croix, who have already made donations. St. Croix, from the beginning, when we attended the biennial convention in the UK, from the beginning, they indicated that they were committed to helping and they have sent, they have sent, this is, they sent free barrels. This is not the first time they've sent stuff to, to us. And I'm very happy for Watch Radio. They seem very energized also. Um, the Canadians have also been very helpful. They've, they, they've done um, a house and, and, and what have you. So there is, there is the will. There is the will from the associations in the US, the UK and Canada. It is for us to match it here. And we are the SSDF, the SSDF staff. Um, we are doing all we can to make this happen. Ambassador for Diaspora Affairs, Her Excellency Dr. Joyce Lynn Clark Fletcher, expressed gratitude on behalf of the government of St. Lucia to the diaspora for all the assistance received, especially in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is a difficult time, but we are very positive. We are looking ahead. We know that things will get better. We know that all the things we had planned for St. Lucia for the diaspora is on hold, but we are not giving up. We are holding on, we are praying, we are pressing on, and we will keep on receiving. We have next week, or I think it's a week and a half again, we will be receiving um, wheelchairs and things from the Diabetic Association UK, St. Lucia Diabetic Association UK, and so many others of you send it. This is what you can do now because you cannot physically come, and if your holiday is very short, you don't want to come and spend seven days in quarantine, and you want to protect those in St. Lucia that you love. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for working with us and the government. Thank you for giving. The handing over ceremony of the donations received from Watch Radio and Family and the St. Lucia Association of St. Croix took place on Tuesday, October 6, 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Inspired by the National Day of Taiwan Lantern Competition, the Cultural Development Foundation has its sights set on additional lantern competitions during the year beyond the Christmas season. The Cultural Development Foundation's collaboration with the Taiwanese Embassy for the well-received National Day of Taiwan Lantern Competition held in St. Lucia has reignited hope for an annual lantern event outside the festive season. It has long been a tradition in St. Lucia to create and display lanterns as part of a celebration to mark the start of the Christmas season. This competition event, Festival of Lights, is observed on December 13th, the day associated with St. Lucia or St. Lucy, the patron saint of light. Executive Director of the Foundation, Ramona Henry Wynn, says the response to the recent competition is inspiring. If you would look around, you would see the excitement that came out of the creativity of the artist. The lanterns are a lot bigger, more extravagant. Um, it's better than we've seen in past years. So for us, it's a wonderful opportunity and it drives home the fact that we've been saying that we can do it out of, out of the season because it has a place. And today has proven that the lanterns do have a place outside of the traditional Christmas season. Henry Wynn further expressed that the CDF always lamented that lanterns had a place outside of the traditional season and platforms could be provided to display creativity. Lantern displays, she says, would be useful at events such as arc race, cruise and airports, 
craft shops and prominent spaces and places. Meantime, the CDF is pleased to team up with the Taiwanese Embassy for the Lantern Competition component of Taiwan's National Day celebrations here on island. St. Lucia gets to share its traditions, culture and talent, and the Embassy gets to honor its country's observance. The theme of this uh, Lantern competition or exhibition is proud of Taiwan and St. Lucia. So we want to use uh, this opportunity to demonstrate, to showcase the cultural relationship between Taiwan and St. Lucia. And we are so happy that 12 uh, artists uh, selected by CDF uh, participated in uh, this uh, competition. Taiwan's National Day is observed on October 10. St. Lucia's diplomatic relations with Taiwan date back to 1984. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Creole. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible. And remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. Time now for the NTN Nouvelle Aquéole with Primus Hutchinson. Monsieur Ta, Jesse. Monsieur Madame, Department of Kenny West Coast pour information en gouvernement cette ici, la CGIS et Télévision Nationale via NTN, Capacito Nouvelle Aquéole, Capacito Primus Hutchinson. Cette ici, j'ai trouvé conseil bien sérieux pour hausser des gouets pour caution après nouvelle, j'ai montré que dernier cas corona le mot 29, c'est un qui j'ai placé PIA en haut risque pour maladie à s'y manger. Ou à part département santé, j'ai montré que j'ai découvert qu'il y a un samedi avec un individu à s'y en chauffeur l'autopassager. Du voyant spécial apparence à sa télévision NTN, chef police PIA, c'est vraiment cher. Chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belmont George, et Premier ministre de l'Ici, Honorable Alain Chastney, a dû cette situation concernant l'action qui mérite pour prendre immédiatement pour essayer d'arrêter la possibilité pour que ça ne passe pas. Selon Dr. Belma George, la situation est très compliquée quand la maladie de dengue a si mal rapidement qu'à l'occasion de la mort déjà. C'est moi qui fait plein de monde qui a entré en cette ici à la porte de ça veut dire illégalement sorti un pays qui a un haut risque de maladie de corona. Aussi, les étrangers qui ont visité sorti un pays côté maladie à Javi, oui, levé tête li, et puis plus force qu'avant. À part de ça, c'est le Dr. Belma George, l'année monde qui refusait d'obéir ce protocole-là qui a établi, avec les siens qui a retourné à pays, mais refusait pour rester en quarantaine. Selon le Dr. Belma George, la situation est très grave parce qu'il y a un monde qui n'a pas porté le masque à ce qui a encore, participé à plusieurs activités sociales et publiques au niveau du pays. Mais ce qui a chagriné les autorités encore plus, c'est les passagers à bord de sans masque à ce qui a été avec services privés et publics qui n'ont pas renforcé ces règles. C'est pour raison que le Dr. Dr. Belma George a annoncé à présent tout protocole qui a été trouvé renforcé bien sérieux pour porter masque, pour rester six pieds de distance, social, pièce activité sociale en public et tout l'autre règle qui j'a en place, ni pour trouver ou observer immédiatement. Dr. Belma George, qui a fait public la savent qui, comme qui était déjà qui existé avant, la pas une pièce paiement pour traitement et toutes ces cliniques-là qui ont resté ouvertes par le gouvernement qui a continué pour changer à ce situation. -là. En parlant de ça, le Premier ministre de l'Ici, Alan Chastney, déclaré que la situation 
chauffeur l'autre passager qui trouvait testé positif pour maladie corona capote yon wis qui passe la mesi pour économie pays là selon premier ministre là même concept le si ka commencé expérience yon ti clarté a épouvement économie côté business chaque affaire yon ti marche plus devant chez motel ka vi ouvert situation ça là ka ni capacité a pour vivre et aider pays à des considérablement. Selon le Premier ministre Chasné, malgré tout progrès qui j'ai enregistré, c'est aussi j'ai perdu plus que 400 millions de dollars en taxes que le gouvernement t'a qu'à amasser plus que 1 million de dollars par année en taxes. Premier ministre a dit qu'il est quand très difficile pour payer à vivre amasser hôtel à Jassa là à bas des gros pèses là qui maladie Covid qu'a posé à son économie cette ci Premier ministre a dit que pendant les autorités ka kontrene pou encourager public la pou obey tout protocole et comprendre ki menace maladie a sérieuse a cette ici en lo moun ka kontrene pou entrer en pays par la par la porte derrière alors c'est l'on premier ministre la ça ka porter en pile wis pou pays a et ka présent nou ni pou accepter ki cette ici peni plus ki maladie ça la parce que moun ka kwè pou reso ça la Premier ministre là, j'ai demandé chef police mon chéri pour sangler sang ces wèg ça là bien sérieux et qu'à présent je fais l'autre passager ni pour faire assurer qui les passagers et qui même toujours ni masse à ce fait jaillot parce que les officiers de police qu'a eu point action qui très sérieux continue. Premier ministre là, j'ai demandé place business aussi pour prendre situation ça là très sérieux. Premier ministre Chasné fait comprendre que gouvernement j'ai fait tout ça qui possible et la pani plus qui yo sa fè a prezan pou asiste moun paske peyi a pani de gwe finans la ki yi teni ek tout moun di pou kopoue pou si yon kamala de sa la se manje. An tout di sa, pe mene chasne fè pou met la ki peyi a pa ka yi fè men anko paske set le si, ja komanse ka wè an ti chanjman an ekonomi a alo yi pa ka yi an fa vè ekonomi set le si pou fè men peyi a kom ki te ka fèt avan. Tout tan gouvetman pa asiwe ki situation en mérité pour faire. Conseil des affaires diverses productions pays a commencé une semaine activité lundi pour faire public là au courant et puis façon des opérations. Conseil ça là en service depuis 2014 et qu'a offert l'occasion pour cette lycéen qui habite ni en pays cette ici et l'autre pays pour prendre l'avantage ces diverses sa pays a qu'a servi pour développer par exemple construction a recall, a fait touristique, le manufacture, a pas même plus et l'autre. Ce que le parlement du ministre des Finances, Madame Esther Rigobert, explique la signification de l'activité de cela pour payer et qu'en cette façon, qui se laisse qu'aspirer ses bénéfices. Nous faisons bon use de la genou, infrastructure, transport, ni pour ça nous ni à payer nous pour assurer nous ça servi par service pour tout le monde. Pour ça qui est resté cette ici, um, résidents cette ici, visiteurs et um, monde qui est resté, nous sommes cette ici mais qui est resté l'autre pays. Puis il y a accès à chaque service à vous en ligne, électroniquement. So, Donc, c'était bon, un bon plaisir to, um, pour nous à um, une cérémonie ça bon matin. Et nous avons un set of, um, un whole set d'activités, après-midi à 10h, um, au soir à 8h, la caille en en vidéo à l'entier nous regarder ou ça en follow après midi à mon ça join nous à dire pour un panel discussion ou activité Premier ministre on a pas Alain Chasné tu as parmi les officiers qui t'a adressé ce manière et qui fait un appel pour cette lycée mettre tête ensemble pour abattre ces trois casse-mer qui ca menacer pays pour le moment et pour nous tous ensemble pour réussir Et c'est comme ça monsieur madame nous on trouve une nouvelle là mon cas monsieur au temps pour qu'à garder, mon cas bon une invitation pour je ne puis moi encore. Si Dieu conserve la vie, les à quoi encore, mon cas pour cette autre nouvelle à quoi à la présent, mon cas vieux présent au Jesse. Merci à Peel Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the Saint Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now, but do stay tuned for more NTN programming. Goodbye.